Joey Marquez looks for Francis Arnaiz. He's in the three-point region. Back pass to Joey Marquez. He fakes off Gidavin and makes it. 12 points now for Joey Marquez. 74-64. Three-point shot by Bernie Bavioza is a little trifle short. Philip Cesar hustling for the rebound. He failed. Philip tried to save that basketball, but instead it's going to be Gilby Chin's tonic basketball. Brandy Fabioso put up a three-point shot that time. There weren't too many people in rebound position. That's right. Well, now the golden opportunity presents itself to the Gilby's Gin Tonics. If they can buy a basket here, maybe a birdie, they'll really be back into the contest. But Bernie Fabioso spoils whatever hope they have. Steve Watson with a counter steal in the backcourt. Well, Bernie tried another fancy pass that time, but Steve Watson got back very quickly to intercept it. They're dead even as far as team falls are concerned. Three apiece. Sorry, Vargas. He certainly doesn't waste any moves. Well, Gary now has 14 points in the game. He's starting to warm up, and the Gilby team, they're going to need all the power, firepower they can from Watson and Gary Vargas. 74 66. Billy Cesar's got a great assist from Abed Kidabin. Looks like the Crisper team, they're very relaxed at this point. They're making plays that maybe they would never, they would normally not do if the game was close. Well, that's because they have been relieved of the pressure of winning a four game sweep. Good ballet act by Steve Watson, but he was quickly traveling. And the guilty bench is up in arms against Dr. Ting Cruz for having made the call. Maybe we can see it again in slow-mo and decide whether there was any ground to the call. Well, in any case, Ring Valenciana is thinking it all with a grain of salt. It is a turnover for the Christmas Redmanizers. Bernie Fabiosa quarterbacking along with Otto Iko. Kadim Israel versus Gary Vargas. Otto Iko from the corner. Puts one up over Steve Watson and misses. Yo Yo Levine arguing possession with Joey Marquez with a foul going against Yo Yo. That's his second personal. And the 14th foul for Crispa. A guy who hasn't seen action all night is going to be checking in at the first location of a dead ball, and that's Lee Mendega. He probably will be replacing Otto Iko, who hasn't been as hot as he was in the first half. Well, the Christmas team, they're going to get a warning right now. Abigail Dobbin is called for... No, it's going to be a technical foul. Abigail Dobbin was called for illegal defense that time. And Lee Mendega does replace Otto Iko. Time left, four minutes and two seconds. I saw you, I saw Iko has not really gotten his guns going here in the second half. He'll get a little rest. Abigail Dobbin is still discussing with the referee exactly what an illegal defense is. <laughs> right. And by the way, in case Crispa does win tonight and goes on to win the championship, well, don't switch channels because we'll be having some dugout interviews with the team itself. Francis are nice. Getting it over to Steve Watson, who's now covered by Lim and Beng and Patrick Israel. Had a slice of the ball, but it went out of bounds in favor of the gin tonics. The scoreboard reads 76 67. That's a funny looking score. Vargas. Watched by Padim Israel from a distance. Steve Watson, hounded by Lim and Beng. Yo Yo Vilamin watching Marquez. He overshoots. And the ball falls right into the hands of Abdi Kidabin, who tells Bernie Fabiosa, let's work this out carefully this time, fella. I'm a little bit tired. Limen Beg goes to Abdi Kidabin. Now he makes his move off Ed Dukut. Israel fires on the screen by Kidabin. Bingo! Well, the Christmas team, they got back quickly that time to cut off that fast break as Gary Vargas was streaking down the court. And every time it seems like Gilby's can get within seven or eight points, they don't score, but Crispa comes down and answers them and puts it back over ten again. Steve Watson coming through with some very important points for the Gin Tonics. That was his dozen marker tonight, cutting down the Crispa lead anew to a single-digit nine points. Freddy Fabiosa working around a pick set up for him by Lim and Beng. He's trying to take on his defender one-on-one. Benjamin dances in, the finger roll, draws a foul. Yes, Joey Marquez is going to get that foul oh, as Dean Lemin drove to the hoop. He hit him across the arm. Marquez is going to leave. Pasco's coming in. We have a timeout. We'll be... There was a deliberate foul called on Rod Pasco. Okay, let's take a look at that again. It's slow-mo. Oh, Ooh. Bernie Fabiosa got an elbow from Pasco right in the head. Oh, that was a nasty one. Yes, not a very good foul coming from Pasco that time. Bernie Fabiosa will probably shoot the shot. You can see it again as Fabiosa went past. Pasco just gave him a little elbow. 
you know, that kind of a blow can really knock a guy out cold. Then, Bernie Fabiosa is as rough and as rugged as they can get. He can take his licks like a man, and look at him. He's just taking an ice pack. So it looked like one of those plays that were possible did not really mean to do that. He was trying to free himself. He accidentally got Bernie Fabiosa in the head. That's right. Basketball is not really a no-contact sport, as a lot of people would ever believe. A lot of rugged action goes on, and without any intention, really, to hurt it. Well, as you know, Bernie Fabiosa has been hitting the face so much this year, he always seems to get his nose into something. <laughs> right. Well, that's a price you have to pay for hustling too much. Yes, he's tough, though. He's, he's looking right now like he didn't even get hit. Fresh as a daisy, and he comes to meet. Francis are nice up high as the gym tonics try to work a half-court offense. Rod Fox in the left part of the court, watched by Lim and Bang. Now he makes his move toward the goal, looking for a cutter inside, and find an opening in the crisp of defenses. And we've got a foul. Well, from the expression on Lim and Bing's face, he's the one that committed the foul. It's going to be his second foul. It's going to be Christmas' 16 foul compared to five for the Gilby team. Well, the gym tonics need all the points they can possibly gather. They're down by 12, now by 11. Rod Foster scoring his seventh point of the evening. And they seem, the Gilby team seems to be in a position where they can strike at the Christmas team, but they just can't get that close. They can only get within nine, ten points. That's right. It's like a car you're trying to start. Every time the engine revs itself up, it dies down again. 81 71, 2 12, left in the third period. Two wide off the glass by Yoi Villamin, and Ed Dugut controls the rebound. Well, Gilby has a chance to get that lead back under 10 again. Gary Vargas comes down, takes a 20 footer, and he scores. Gary Vargas, the lone flickering hope here for the Gilby's Gin Tonics. Maybe not the lone, but certainly one of the brightest hopes here for the Gin Tonics of pulling off a, a second win against the Crystal Red Miners in this five game old series. And Willie Pearson is waiting in the way for the next dead ball situation. In the meantime, here is Abu Kidabin. He pump fakes and gets the ball from Ed Dugut. Well, Ed Dugan committed himself that time. That's going to be his fourth foul. He'll be 16 foul. Bing comes out of the game. Willie Pearson comes in. Willie Pearson worked up a pretty big sweat in the first half, but they didn't get too many points from him. Well, Bernie Bernard is hoping he'll finally ignite himself at this juncture. And we've got Ed Dugan being replaced now by Romulo Mamarin. 81 73 is the count. Abit Giravin has one more charity coming to him. It's in. An odd time point lead for the Crispin Red Marizers. 21 points for Abit Giravin. Who is easily the top producer for the Crispin Red Marizers in this playoff series. A nice. Tries to drive inside and they lost it to baseline. Fumbled there by Rod Costco. So once well, again, Francis are nice. Was the first one who fumbled it. Yes, once again, that's a blown opportunity. They could they could have come within seven that time and say Crystal has the basketball. Fabiosa versus Francis are nice. So what else is new? Israel versus Gary Vargas. He's Yuri Villamin trying to take advantage of the mismatch with Rod Pasco and missing the opportunity. 82 73 still a count. Rod Pasco, let's see if they can get two points here. Rod oh, Pasco yeah. does. Good move by Pasco that time. He backed Pearson in, swept across the lane for the left, right-handed hook shot. Slowly, methodically, and steadily, the gym tonics are closing in on the Red Manizers. They're down by only seven. Bernie Fabiosa comes up with another structure. And that was a three-point shot at that. Well, we have 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Francis R. Nice goes to the hoop. He misses the shot. Mamarillo comes down with the rebound. He scores. 85-77, no doubt about it. The gin tonics are back in the contest. They haven't given up. They are not demoralized as a lot of people think they are. And Abit Kidabin comes through again with an unmolested shot. Well, that time, Abit just left Mamaril just standing there. He flew right past him. Romulo Mamaril is very effective uh, with a scoring stock of Gilby's, but then he is so unwieldy, it seems at times uh, he can hardly move. Well, Gary Vargas did not... Hit a good pass off that time to Pasco and hit him on his legs and went out of bounds. Another turnover for the Crisper team. They're up by 10. They're looking for a sweeter lead. And Francis Arnaiz is playing cat and mouse here with Bernie Fabiosa. Abid Gidabin is going to challenge the big guys of Gilbis and he steps on the baseline. A lot of contact on that play too as Gidabin went to the hoop. No foul was called. He's concentrating on the game. He did not argue with the referee. He comes back and steals the basketball. 
That was a very ill-advised pass by Steve Watson. The fourth quarter is underway. The Red Manizers hanging on to a 10-point lead and a good steal perpetrated by Joey Marquez. Very deft ball handling by Joey Marquez keeps it alive for Gilbys and Hinoelau puts up another vital two points for Gilbys. Oh, Joe, we have scoring by period. You see Crisper won the first quarter by 12-36-24. They also won the second quarter by 1-22-21, but Gilbys came back in the third quarter to take it by three points. Good block by Romulo Mamaril, but Adego won't be denied. He misses on his second drive. Philip says there with a full-out shot. So total domination of the boys by the Christmas team, but they're going to have to get back on the fast break. Here comes Joey Marquez. He does not score, but he's fouled by Willie Pearson. He'll get two foul shots. Willie Pearson felt it his duty to foul Joey Marquez, and that was a great way to foul. He prevented a sure basket there, as you can see in our slow-mo replay. Well, Joey was a little upset with himself that he did not make that shot as he was pushed from behind by Willie Pearson. Well, if you're going to foul, I've always felt uh, you might as well make sure the guy doesn't convert. It. Oh, good follow-up by Gary Vargas that time. Dean Lamine jumped too soon. Now they're only down by seven points. That's right. Uh, another rally being mounted here by the gym tonics. Can they sustain this? We'll find out shortly. Javier providing Otto go with the screen. He's picked up by Willie Herolau. Cesar does not get the shooter's bounce, and Villamil bangs it in for two points plus a foul. Yes, Villamil in there doing the hard work. He's on the board. He's grabbing those offensive rebounds. He puts it back up. It's going to be Mamarill's fourth foul. That's the first team foul for the Gilby's team here in the fourth quarter. Norman Blagg, if Crispa does win the championship tonight, and you ask me who the most important players for Crispa are, I would say Julia Villamil would be one of the three most important uh, contributions here in the uh, Crispa cause. Well, Villamil has been playing well. Padim Israel has been playing well. Cesar has even been playing well. Gudabin and Atoyko. Mamarillo goes to the hoop for the two points. He's also fouled by Javier on that play. He'll have a chance for a slam. Well, this gangling young man, who probably is the tallest professional cager in the land, has proven his offensive saga. 92-84. He's also been responsible for a lot of blocked shots. And as we mentioned in the beginning of our telecast, Joe, the Christopher team cannot take this Gilby team for granted. They're only down by seven points now. And a couple of baskets, Gilby could be right back in this ball game. What can really catch up with Christopher here is if they adopt a layback attitude, like you said, and... They've got a foul inside heavy traffic there. Philip Cesar was the recipient of that foul. And it's called on Robolo Mamarillo. His fifth personal. Not a very smart foul by Mamarillo that time. He's too important to the team to foul out of the game. Ed Duke is going to come in and replace him. Philip Cesar is going to be on the line for two shots. Well, Philip Cesar has it within his sense to bail Crispa out of its present predicament. Their lead has been whittled down to only seven points, and that's a very shaky margin in any league, in any language. Eight-point lead now, courtesy of Philip Cesar. He's looking for nine points. It is nine points. And for himself, he's already got 15 markers across his name. Time down to 10 minutes and 20 seconds in the ball game. Willie Hanawalao assuming the court general's chores for Gilby's in the absence of Sonny Jaworski and Francis are nice. Back to a play anchored on actually and Ali Oop. Yes, that was anchored on Gary Vargas that time. Great pass from Willie Hanawalao. 94-87. Well, as long as the Jim Tonic can keep that deficit down to seven points, they're within striking distance. But Willie Pearson promptly comes through with another retaliatory strike. Oh, there you go, Willie. If I'm wrong, the gin tonics have not led even once, but then you cannot really count them out of the game because they're still in the middle of a rally. They're trying to bounce. And their backs are up against the wall, too, Joe. This is do or die for them, so they're not going to give up. They're going to go right down to the wire with this game. Well, right now, they're laboring under an 11-point deficit. Bosco, a tight shot by Rod Bosco, and Willie Pearson comes down with a rebound for Chris Van Paul pulls up against Steve Watson. Bingo! Atoyko finds his long-range bombs again. That means bad news for the Gilby's Gin Tonic. Bad tidings for Turing Valenzona as we move to the last 8 minutes and 40 seconds of this game. Yo-Yo Villamil tightening up on Joey Marquez. He works his way agonizingly inside the paint, throws up a shot and misses. Will appears in arguing possession. Willie Hanawalao wins the garbage. 
And he's confronted by Yoyo Villameda. Steve Watson decides against a three-point shot, brings it all the way to the iron. Yes, yeah, good move by Watson, but somebody's got to get back on defense for Gilby. So he and Phillips says off for the easy shoot. He's going to be fouled by Gary Vargas. He really fits for that foul from Gary Vargas. Gary Vargas took that bait hook, line, and sinker. Phillips says are ever the smart one waited, and let's watch that again. Oh, wow. What a smart move by Philip Cesar. That's what a grizzled veteran can do against a great, inspired, but still young player like Gary Vargas. Well, it worked for Cesar that time, but he almost missed the shot, so it could have worked against him. But he does get the two points plus the foul shot for the slam. 105 to 91. That's another whopping... Point advantage for the Redmondizers. Time down to eight minutes and 12 seconds. And look at the team fall picture tells us that the odds are against Gilby's in this department too. They've already got five against only two for the Redmondizers. Watson puts up an 18 footer, got it. And Alex Clarinho rises from his chair to tell the Gilby's gin tonics to go down on defense. That's what they need. They have to rotate back on defense. Here's Ato Iko. He has a shorter Willie Hedder allow on him. Willie's going to be called for the foul. Ato Iko is just trying to back him in to get in good shooting position. Which, is, this, which yeah. is just about anywhere by Ato Iko. <laughs> right. <laughs> Including the men's room. Vidyamin at low post. The turnaround. He misses. Willie Pierce and never slice up the letter. The ball falling to the hands of Willie Hedder allow. And the gym punish are running the break. Costco pulls up. Yes, sir. Oh, they're going to call a blocking foul on Willie Hedder allow that time. Gilby's bench is not very happy. Senator Jaworski's up. It's not going to matter. The referee made his call. Well, the Gilby's bench is up in arms. And some of the spectators in the upper box section uh, are getting into the act, too. We just saw a projectile hurled from there. I think it was a chunk of ice splintered upon impact uh, on the floor. Good field by Rod Pasco. And the Jins are running the break again. Marcus goes up. Yes, he's going to get a foul from Willie Pearson as he went to the hoop strong. Willie was the one that made that turnover. He hustled back to stop the shot by Joey Marquez. 105 to 93 is the count. Marquez. That's Pearson's third foul. That's also going to be Chris's third team foul. And Turin Valenciana is still protesting that call made by the referee earlier, which nullified a basket made by Willie Henneralau. 105 to 94. Two for two by Joey Marquez. Cuts down to Chris Lee to an even 10 points. Time down to seven minutes and 25. The gin tonics have hit the team foul limit with that much time left. Oh, good shot by Philip Cesar. Nice finger roll that time. The Gilby's gin tonics, if they're going to win this ball game, they're going to have to make their move within the next two minutes. The woes of Turing Valenzuela are piling up. Uh, Rod Pasco misses from the three-point region. And Philip Cesar and Atoico argue possession of the basketball. Here's Fadim Israel crossing the midcourt line. Redmondizer is going in a very fluid motion down court. Yuri Vidamin sucks it in. Everything's going Christmas way now, Joe. They're getting all the bounces. They're getting the easy shots on their offensive end. And to top it all, they can go on fishing expeditions for the remainder of this game because the gin tonics are over the team foul limit. Well, Willie tries a three-point shot there that time. It's no good. Willie Pearson comes back the other way. Otto Eko takes the shot. He makes it. 25 points for Otto Eko. Christmas guns are blazing and the Chris fanatics are beside themselves with joy. They send the celebration after this game. They're unfurling their banners already. It's seconds left in this game another basket scored there by Gary Vargas his 24th point tonight 111 to 97 Romulo Mamaril is preparing to get back into the action at the next dead ball situation so gets it over to Cesar here's Padim as well driving past Costco while the Gilby team they're having to attempt difficult shots the Christmas club they're just coming down making layups 113 to 97 
a mid-air collision resulting in a foul. And Gary Vargas hitting the deck. William in who is called for his third personal. And Steve Watson goes back to the bench in his place, Romy Mamarilla. That's the keeping hold now. No, actually, Mamarilla is replacing uh, Rod Pasco. Well, Romo Lamar. from the Chris Fanatics. He deserves every bit of it. Vargas coolly sinks his first charity. He hasn't given up the ghost. One thirteen to 99. Still a 14-point lead for the Redmanizers. Time down to 5 minutes and 43 seconds. Phillips says they're working the ball slightly to the right side of the crisp end of the court. He dubbed him, gets an assist from Phillips. Short on that jump shot. Watson controls the defensive rebound. And will out tells everybody, gets down and let's form this offense. Phillips says they're trying to swipe, allowing Watson some leeway. He went up and got a foul. Well, you can see in Watson's eyes, he wanted that shot that time. He played with the basketball for a while. Gudabin's going to get that foul. It's going to be his third. It's going to be Chris's fifth team foul. Watson had the look of a hungry tiger as he went for that hoop. And he's getting his points from the three, uh, from 15-foot line instead. Barely a minute since he was pulled out. Then Yoya Villamin is right back on the floor, replacing Willie Pearson this time. Pearson himself gets a big round of applause from the Chris Fanatics. A lot of these guys are wearing Grosby rubber shoes. That's because Grosby is now the official basketball shoes of the PBA. 113 to 101. Philip Cesar working his way into the paint. That is the pattern that Philip Cesar moves. 115 to 101. The Redmanizers keeping the resurgent gin tonics at bay. Saving off every rally being mounted by the gin tonics. And using the clock, it's now working to their advantage. We're down to the last four minutes and 55 seconds of this game. And they try that same play to Gary Vargas. The alley-oop play this time, it does not work. Arturico comes back, he goes to Gadabin. Gadabin scores. That basket might well have broken the backs of the gin tonics. With only 4.39 left, they're down by 16. Gary Vargas misses. A second prize is likewise in vain. Well, Gary Vargas looks a little winded or either a little frustrated. He's staying back on defense. Arthur Coe comes back, attempts a three-pointer, misses. Gary Marquez comes down with the rebound. They need points in a hurry. Marquez pulls up, misses. Watson boxed out of the rebound by Yuri Villamin. Abid Girabin controls for the Redmanizers. We're down to four minutes and 13. Abid Girabin, what a Philip Cesar. Phillips is having a great game here tonight. Gilby's is getting some good shots on offense. They just can't seem to knock them down. Willie Hanarola responds with a very puny two points. They need a lot more than that. They need a burst of machine gun fire to get them back into the contest, and time is definitely against them. They're down by 16 with 3.50 to go. Well, Padim is hammered on that play. No foul is called. Gilby comes back. They have a 4 1 fast break. Philip says it's going to be called for the foul. Willie had to allow a shot. Count. Well, at this point, it looks like the Red Menagers are simply out on target practice. They're running rings around the gym tonic at will and will be back after the timeout. The Crystal Red Menagers, about 100 of them, have already left the Coliseum, leaving still a good uh, 25,000 here at the Coliseum to watch uh, this game right down to the bitter end. And it looks like it's going to be a bitter run for the Gilby's Gin Tonics at the rate it's going with only 3 minutes and 25 to go and Crispa really stepping on the gas. Well, the referees have to be careful now. There's a lot of contact going on out on the court. They're not making any calls at all. They're going to have to maybe take control of this situation. You can say that again, Norman. We don't want any melees erupting on account of uh, officiating. 121 to 106. Uh, Steve Watson misses a point blank range. He draws a foul from Yoya Villamin, who reached as high as the sky to acknowledge the sky. I think the Crystal players, they fit victory right now. They're starting to clown around a little bit. Well, it's hot dog time for the Crystal Red Menizers. A near steal by Phillips. Cesar. He completes the steal. And look at the flustered Steve Watson trying to get chased and committing a foul to add to his role. Good concentration by Philip says all that time as he went to the basket. Maybe we have that one on replay. Steve Watson tried to stop him. 
Watson, of course, the basket. You see him go strong. He gets the foul from Watson. He scores. He has a timeout. We'll be right back. The evening to give the Vispa a 16-point lead cut down by Steve Watson. The only 15 with a three-point shot. With only two minutes and 40 seconds to go, will you concede the game to Crisp at this point, Norman Black? No, I'm not going to do that, Joe. I'm just going to sit here with you and watch the game to the very end. Maybe the Gilby team can spark a rally right now, but their chances of winning this game look, look very dim as Steve Watson throws the ball into the basketball support. <laughs> Two minutes and 19 seconds. Well, to the eternal credit of the Gilby's gin tonics, they gave the Redmondizers the big scare of their lives in game three as well as game four. But tonight has been all Christmas from the very beginning. That it has been. Gilby's never had a taste of the lead at all. And Gary Vargas is sitting very forlorn no. beside a table officials. In the background, you can hear no. the announcement from Chito Salita. Last two minutes, we're in the end game. Only two minutes away. From celebration on the part of the Crystal Redmondizers. Well, that might be a good move. Watson's being taken out of the game. He and Otto Iko are having words right now. Gary Vargas comes in to replace him. Watson. Watson doesn't want to leave the game. But he, in a very gentle, manly gesture, shakes hands with Bernie Fabiosa. Well, thereby lies the importance of what you said earlier about the referees. Uh, having to call it very tight, even if this is shaping up to be a big blowout for the Christopher Redmondizer. Because you have a lot of ruffled feelings here, and we've got a timeout. We'll be right back. No, no the 25-second clock went off on the Christopher Redmondizer. <laughs> Okay, you came back with us just in time to see Francis and Nice come through with another three-point shot, 126 to 114. Thereby lies the last hope of the Gilby's Gin Tonics, the three-point region. Philip Cesar follows up and miss by Abid Girabin. Atoiko likewise misses on a third effort. And here is Russ Bosco with the leather. They have to come up with those three-point shots, but our Nice prefers the two points. Well, it's now a ten-point ball game with one minute, 19 seconds left. Mamarillo's going to try to stop Cesar. Cesar pumps. He doesn't go for it. He's called for three seconds. He practically pitched a tenth inside that paint. Now, the Christmas team must watch themselves. There's still a minute and 15 seconds left. They're only up by 10 points. A couple of three-point shots could ch change this game around. 126 to 116. Yo-Yo Villamin, that might have been the lethal blow. With only a minute left, the Redmondizers are up by 12. 128 to 116. Yes, the Redmondizers have the sweet smell of success just around the corner. Their fourth straight title in the last one and a half years. Their sixth All-Filipino crown and their 13th PBA title in the history of their participation in this pro league. Asia's only pay-for-play league. And Abit Girabin adds the icing on the cake. It's all over now, I guess, with only 38 seconds to go and Crispa up by 14. Who's going to get the basketball back? Cesar comes out. Javier comes in. Lemon Bing is going to check in. Atoy Ko is going to go out. Atoy is not too happy. He wants to stay in the game. He wants to pour in more points. I've never seen the overkill instincts of Atoy Ko so sharp enough as they are tonight. Villamin. He faked the shot. Instead, passed off to Abed Girabin, who apologizes for losing it to the baseline, but not before it was touched by Mamaril. So it's going to be inbound. Villamin tries a reverse layup foul. Gary Vargas. Well... In retrospect, Norman Black, have word that the Gilbert's gin tonics go wrong. Well, they came out right from the very beginning trying to run with this Crisper team. Crisper was ready to play tonight. They wanted to get this series over in five games. Without the presence of Sonny Jaworski and Terry Sedania, the Gilbert's team was really undermanned. They just got beat by a better team here tonight, Jim. Yeah. Definitely. And the gin tonics have nothing to be ashamed of. It was not a sweep for the Crispa Redmondizers. They did score one victory over the vaunted Crispa squad, which undoubtedly is the most lethal offensive team in the land today. 132 to 116. Bernie Fabiosa goes for the iron. Nope, he gives it to Gidabin unselfishly. And Gidabin stops it in. That's really insult to injury. Yes, I think he put the icing on the cake that time with that dunk shot. We have 2.8 seconds left. Mama Real puts up a three-pointer. Oh, it's going to be a two-pointer. He makes the shot. And the Crispa placards, all the banners have been unfurled. 